I have a theory that life does not change. People change. A thousand years ago, the water our ancestors drank, drank sorry, was still H2O, and the air they breathed was still oxygen. But as time went on, man's knowledge evolved, seemingly changing the world, when all we were doing was changing how we saw it. I used to see the world as one of misery. I saw my life as one engulfed by negativity. No friends, no joy, no life. Throughout my schooling years, I didn't have many friends, but I wasn't an introvert, nor your stereotypical nerd, or even a hardcore gamer. I was none of those. In fact, I would have considered myself as your average kid, but I still struggled to put a smile on my face. As school went by, the teenage years arrived. Now everyone had a phone, constantly texting and Facebooking in their downtime. But my parents brought me up in a fairly conservative environment, and they didn't allow me to have access to these essential life-saving tools until I was older. So I felt kind of detached and disconnected from everyone else, an outsider almost. And finally came the partying age. Now let me get this straight. Hell would freeze over before my parents would even begin to consider sending me to a party, let alone stay the night. So while my friends rejoiced in their youthful happiness, I struggled through those long, hard years without what most of you would call a life. And you're right, I didn't have one. <laughs> but let's move forward. Last year, I flew to Pakistan to visit my family. Now, in Pakistan, I have over 100 immediate relatives, including 62 first cousins. Yeah, that makes it really hard to remember names. Anyway, out of the 62 cousins, the eldest one, whose name is Frozana, is by far my favorite. Frozana, who's now in her mid-30s, was born without the ability to hear or talk. And in her early childhood, she was diagnosed with polio. Ever since, she has to walk around in permanent crutches. Now, you might think that Frizana would be depressed, or always complain about her life, or be sad, but Frizana is none of those. Instead, the joy and happiness that she brings to this world, to me, frankly, was quite unbelievable. Even trying to walk, or, I don't know, crunch across the muddy, uneven, and narrow alleyways of my village, tripping and stumbling from one place to the next, a smile never left her face. Frizana mastered the art of song, and despite the communication barrier, she even successfully ran a school for women on how to make clothes. She made most of my mom's clothing and explained what measurements she needed over video call. And she even taught me sign language, although admittedly, the success of that is up for debate. Nevertheless, Frozana remains ever grateful for what she has, however little that may be. So, I thought to myself, how could it be that someone with so little is still grateful for what she has, still happy, still smiling. And how could it be that I, please, a borderline male model with a life full of luxury, <laughs> would complain on a regular basis about my life? That can't be right. So on my way back to Buc uh, on my way back from Pakistan and well into grade 11, I was constantly thinking about my ingratitude in my previous years. Now, before I go on, there's one thing you have to know about me. I love using analogies. Coming up with them can be really tricky, but it's a tool which has helped me immensely throughout my life. So as I said, I was thinking about my ingratitude until one biology lesson on a Thursday afternoon. I was looking through a microscope, listening to my teacher drone on and on about, <laughs> about cell walls and membranes and nuclei and a whole lot of stuff that went in this ear and out the other. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that. So, I kind of zoned out. And when I wasn't listening, my teacher said the most important information about microscopes. You know, I think teachers specifically pick that time, when everybody isn't listening to say the most important information. It happens all the time. Anyway, what she said was, the most common mistake people make when using a microscope isn't that they're looking at the wrong part of the slide. It's that they're using the wrong eyepiece. But of course, I didn't hear that. So there I was, moving my slice of banana left, right, forward, up and down, nothing was happening. So I called a friend over to have a look, and he said that I hadn't stained it. Typical me. Squirted a little bit of blue dye on, still couldn't see anything. Then quietly praying on the inside, praying that I hadn't done something stupidly wrong, 
I asked my biology teacher why I couldn't see anything. And in the most condescending manner possible, <laughs> she looked me in the eye and said, Saad, what was the most important information about microscopes I told you literally two minutes before? I gave her a blank face. So she reached over and moved the eyepiece. I looked again and bam, banana cells. <laughs> it was then I realized that life is like a slide of bacteria. <laughs> it's not about what you're looking at. It's about the lens through which you're looking. It's about your attitude, your perspective through which you view the world. So if you can change your lens, you can change your world. And currently, even though we live in a first world country, indulge in luxury, we are still ungrateful. I say this to everybody in the audience, but specifically the teenagers. Ingratitude is a disease which I fear has plagued the teenage population. So I say to you, to us, stop being ungrateful for how you look. You have been given a beautiful body with no deformation, physical or mental. You have all your limbs and no disability, and that's not a small thing. Don't be ungrateful that your waistline isn't as thin as you'd like it to be. There are some impoverished kids in this world who can measure their waistline by just wrapping their hands around their waist. That's how hungry they are. Don't be ungrateful that you don't have an iPhone 6 or a PlayStation 4 or whatever it is. There will always be someone in the world who couldn't even dream of having just a fraction of what you have. And all we need to do is to realize that. All we need to do is refocus our lens and think of what we do have. And luckily for me, that Pakistan trip completely cured me. And no, it wasn't suddenly removing these chicken legs and grossly enlarging my biceps, you know, complimenting my already ridiculously good looking face, nor was it a sudden rush of invitations from my friends begging me to come to their party. I still look the same, and sadly my social life still does not exist. But ever since then, I have been on a happiness high. But my drug isn't ice, or meth, or anything bought from a shady dealer. No, it's manufactured in my brain, and it's called gratitude. As William A. Ward said, gratitude can transform common days into thanksgivings, turn routine jobs into joy, and change ordinary opportunities into blessings, and turn my absence of a social life into one that I actually enjoy. And. You don't have to take my word that gratitude gives you a better attitude. Take the word of Dr. Giacomo Bono, who found that in a study of several hundred teenagers, the more grateful ones were 17% overall more happy and hopeful about their future, had a 13% reduction in negative emotions, 10% decline in alcohol and drug abuse, cheating on schools, skipping school sorry, and detention, and a 15% decline in the symptoms of depression. And this was just over a four year period. Imagine where a life of gratitude would take you. My advice to us teenagers is that we should refocus our life not on what we don't have, but what we do. Teaching ourselves to focus on the positive and appreciate the good in our lives is perhaps the greatest gift we can give ourselves. And to do so, we don't have to change the environment around us. Remember, the world is a constant. All we need to do is refocus our lens so we see the world not in negativity, but in gratitude. Thank you.